Red for an adult audience. Loveline may contain sexually oriented content. Content. Listener discretion is advised. Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Loveline. Loveline. Coast to coast. Hey, hey, hey. Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. Yeah. That's right, Anderson. I'm the man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, Drew, you know what I'm this close to doing, buddy? You couldn't be dropping trout. Dropping oh. trout. Hell yeah. This close to dropping trout, everybody. Woo. Oh, man. I'll tell you, Drew. You know, the, you know the other thing I like when they do on morning shows? Like uh, one guy starts talking and the other guy talks about how crazy he is. Oh, man. Don't say it. Don't say it. Oh, you're a bad man. Oh, man. You're going to get us thrown off the air. You're out of control, Hold me brother. Back. Hold me back. Oh, man. I'll tell you, Drew, you are loose cannon, man. You, we're going to march right up the hall and right into the program director's office, man. You're going to chew us a new A-hole. And you know what I'll have to do so we can get to my A-hole? Drop trial. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I won't either. Woo! We got a big show coming up for you tonight. We got nobody. Yeah. <laughs> we got a bunch of stone 15-year-old callers. Yeah. Don't worry. Dr. Drew's going to find out where they were molested. Woo-hoo-hoo. See if their dad made them drop trial when they were younger. Tell you what now. Yeah, girls are going to cry. That's right. Adam's going to make the same jokes like dropping trial. Uh, yeah, that's the next show. There you go. <laughs> what? There you go. Hold on. All that, I took up a minute and 42 seconds. That's it? That's the show. Jesus Christ. What are we going to do? I'll tell you, I, uh, you know, I ran, I ran a red light about three weeks ago in my car. And uh, out here in uh, L.A., we got the, uh, we got the, uh, cameras at the intersections, you know? There, there are, yeah, these automated devices that catch you mm-hmm. in the act. Mm-hmm. Two flashes. I don't know what the two flashes are for. Maybe the one... It's not front and back. back. No. They don't want to see your pupil, the red light, come back through your pupils. I hope, I hope, it's, <laughs> I hope it's not front and back. It, it, it's just front and front. It's like one means, uh, well, you, uh, you passed it, you triggered it, and the next one's a picture. I'm not exactly sure. If someone knows what the two flashes are, tell me. I saw two, huh. but not front and back, front and front. Huh. And this, by the way, is why I don't wear a front license plate. Oh, yes. Oh, you're wild, man. Yeah. You want to know why? You're dangerous. Because I don't get the tickets. Huh. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Maybe I shouldn't be talking about this, but... You can get a ticket for that, though. Doesn't. You can get a ticket from that, but that's 25 bucks, and uh, that's just a fix-it ticket. That's not a 250 bucks. Oh, that it doesn't re- go on your record either. Running red light is two hundred fifty bucks. Sorry about that, but uh, yeah, it's like two hundred and change, and and it goes on your record. Wow! But uh, you don't have that front license plate. They don't know who you are, so that's the good news. Good times. Oh yeah, I'm like I'm like a uh, modern day Jesse James, except for uh, except for instead of a horse, I use a uh, mule. You thought I thought I was gonna say car, right? Car without a front plate, yeah. Yeah, Jessica. Uh, you ni- you're 19. Yes, I am. What's up? Um, I heard through friends that if I or if a girl ate fruit with citrus in it, mm-hmm. that that um guys can taste it when they're eating her out or something. Well, you know, you know, it's funny, Drew. Mm. <laughs> we, we we haven't heard the term eating out too often on this show and as i told you yes. a couple days back i yes. announced to my buddies at work that uh, i found uh, eating out second only to finger bang on the sort of ugly sounding scale yes started the last two shows with an eating out question do you know, know yeah, why is it had, when you announce that i mean really we did two out of the last three shows started with an eating out question and that's a term we hadn't heard in a month Right. Easy. Right. And it's it somehow me bringing it up at the Crank Yanker office somehow cosmically spawned the eating out discussion. Jeez. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes, it's crazy. All right. Well, I, I don't know what that is, but it's I... It's not nutty cuckoo crazy, but it's, uh, it's a little crazy. All right. So, uh, citrus. Yeah. Yeah. Acid, Drew? Uh, just, I don't know of anything that really changes things. Oh. That anybody would notice. Well, why wouldn't it? A little bit. 
Okay. I guess a little bit. I, the, um, you know, we, all, we all agree there are certain things that make various secretions worse. Uh, you know, we can make our breath worse with onions and with garlic and things right. like that. And so other orifices, I imagine, can be affected by some things. But making them better, you really you can't make your breath better. You know? right, but let me, ask you, let me ask you this, Drew. It, you, your body, I'm just making this up, but your body has some kind of balance between... Um, acids and certain vitamins and minerals and and I don't know carbohydrates and what have you in it. Like if you overload it with one of them, doesn't it kind of throw off the flora and fauna in there? Screw things up a little. You start you get diarrhea. Like you yeah. eat a hundred apricots, you get diarrhea. Yeah. You eat too much of one thing, you eat a hundred donuts. You know, you eat a hundred anything. It, it throws things off. Yeah. But you're talking about all right. Yeah, changing what it. comes out of the what's secreted as opposed yeah. to yeah. Listen, that was that was retarded. Don't listen to me, Jessica. Yeah. <coughs> is there like a, a well? Also, is there a better like way of saying it than eating out? Because yeah, yeah well, tell me. oral sex. You, you got you got oral sex. Oral sex. Okay. You got like going down on yeah, somebody. Okay. Even that's kind of. You, you're 19 years old. You haven't, haven't. You don't say like a guy went down on me. Oh yeah, I do. Okay. Uh, okay, baby. Okay. Hey. Hey, good times, so, though, right? Thank you. You guys rock. All right, All right Jessica. <coughs> so, oh, boy. A better way to say it than eating out. Oh. Now, there's no other way to say it. Like, Drew is a doctor. That's, if you're consulting yes. a patient and you're talking about using, like, let's say, a dental dam. Yes. You'd say this this product was conceived in the in the lab, tested uh, in, in the, in the uh, colleges and the university, specifically for eating out. Yes, for eating out your partner. <laughs> right. That's, that's how you'd say it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sure. Shanti? Yes. You're uh, 20? Yes, I am. What's up? Um, well, me and my boyfriend have been dating for probably about four months, and I have tried numerous times to try and spice up our sex life with toys, movies, everything. Movies. And uh -huh. it's not working. He's not going for the movies? Anything. Really? Really. You've been dating how long? About four months. Now, what do you what do you mean? He's not going for the movie. Hey, what does he while he's watching movie? Yeah, I mean, we'll have sex mm -hmm. either during or after, but it's just not like. Yeah. How old is he? He's only twenty six. Is he on medication? Mm, not that I know. Of. Why? Uh, you're you're you're, you're twenty, right? Right. Why do you say only twenty six? Because I you I mean, date older I guys. I d yeah, typically I do date older guys, but, and with my experience, around 25, 26, they're ready, they're raring to go, they yeah. want sex all the time. He what, doesn't. What the average? They do. What do you mean your average, your average guys, how old that you date? Like, if you dated guys that were 35? Um, in the past, yeah. And when you were 19? No. How old? Well, before him, my boyfriend was, like, 34. So four months ago. You're 20 well, now. How far away was nine, is 19? Uh, my birthday is next month. So you'll be 21? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so you're 30, and you're 20, you're dating a guy who's 34. Hmm. And those guys are not as rare to go. Any dad issues? Uh, no. Where is your dad? Uh, my dad's been there my entire life. My parents are still together. Mm -hmm. High school sweethearts. Mm -hmm. That's your biological dad. Biological dad. All right. You love him? He's a good guy? Well, I was adopted. He's not my biological dad. <laughs> <laughs> oh. God damn, it's tough being right every goddamn time on this show, Drew. <laughs> every time. Every time. I just said that's it. I'll, I'll never admit I'm wrong about anything ever. Even if I, if I bet, you know, that's what I do. When I bet football games on Sundays yeah. and I take, like, Oakland in the points and Oakland gets blown out by uh, six touchdowns. Refuse to believe. No, I have to be right. I have to be right. Look at the score again. <laughs> is 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 that is that Rich Gannon's biological? Is he the biological quarterback no, no. of this team? Here you go. Conspiracy. Conspiracy. Yeah, I will not they, pay. I will not pay. Stage it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. All right, so uh, we're uh, talking to her. Shanti. All right, so anyway, be that as it may. How old were you when you were adopted? Uh, when I was first born. Immediately after birth. Immediately, yeah. Okay. Mm. All right, and um, you know, and twenty and thirty-four is not that big a difference. No. Right? It's, you know, mm. well, she's usually dates older guys. But what what, what is this guy? What is the experience like with this guy? That's so nothing. What, what, what's what's missing? I don't. It's it just. I I mean I want it more. Yeah. More frequently. You know, I I could I could every day. 
Well, how often is he good for? On our average, maybe three times a month, four times a month. So mm-hmm. once a week. A little, little light for a 26-year-old guy. And four months into a relationship. Yeah. He should be uh, trying to knock your lights out at that point with his penis. Is he a normal guy, healthy guy? Yeah. Not doing drugs or alcohol? No. You don't intimidate him at all? I hope not. Well, I mean, does he know you used to date? You know, it's not like 26-year-old guys, you don't get the career on track, you're not making a ton of money, and your last boyfriend made some money and had a career. You know what I mean? Well, actually, he's doing better than my ex. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's good. Okay. Maybe are you, is, are you, Maybe this just isn't a good match. I mean, we're, we're like, perfect everywhere else. It's just... Hmm. I mean, I, I it might... Are you I being... Know, it's because I had more experience, or... Uh, you think you're being insecure a little bit? Like, maybe this is just his rhythm, his style, his cadence. I guess it's possible. I don't but, know. But she's, I mean, not, she's not satisfied with it, though. You, you have an orgasm? Yeah. No. Yeah, well... No. Not during sex, no. no. But but when do you have one? Later in the tub? Well, he usually finishes, and then... He pol- and then what? Then what? And then helps me finish. How? He, he uh, with his out. fingers. Oh, with his fingers. Did no like- oral sex, huh? Not yet. Oh, 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 now, now we're getting somewhere. He's not done this yet? Not yet. Oh, there's anger here. <laughs> What's up? Gay? I don't know. Oh, don't say that. Black? No. Well, I'm stumped. Hmm. Medication? Not that I know of. Will not go down on you, huh? Mm-mm. Have you asked him? Too many times. Ooh, what does he say? Uh, I'll do it next time. All right. Uh, right. Yeah, you get, you get, you get forget this ain't going to work. Yeah, it, that's get not, rid of him. Yeah, he's not willing. Really. He's not, he's not making an effort. Yeah, he's got to be willing to do, to, to compromise and do things he might not necessarily want to do because you want him to. That's fine that you ask for that. He's just step up to the plate and deliver. That's all. Yes. That's right. Mm, not working. Something's up. Something's With him, yeah, something's fishy. There's more to be revealed about this guy, that I guarantee you. <clears throat> he doesn't want to, he just says, like, no, not this time or no thanks. Oh, no, no, no. no Listen, no. let me tell you something sexually. As a dude, you can't, you can't really say no to stuff. You, uh, mean, you mean? From you, an etiquette standpoint. And still withhold the uh, male code of honor? Yeah, you just can't say no, like if somebody asks you to no, go down on him. to say no to stuff? You know what I'm saying? Well, I mean, I there's, mean, there's certain, certain stuff, I, I, admittedly, but yeah, you know, most guys, three months in a relationship, mid-20s. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. No, yeah. 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 yeah, 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 no, yeah, no, yeah, I like when people do that. <laughs> no, no, yeah, I mean, no, yeah, no, 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 yeah, yeah, no. Kelly? Yes? No. <laughs> What's up, Kelly? Uh, um, I've been dating a guy um, for like, I think it's been like five months now. And I lost contact with him whenever he went into rehab, long-term residential rehab. You were dating him, whoa, whoa. dating him how long? Like five months. And how long has he been in treatment? He's been in treatment for the past two. So you were with him when he was using? He was trying really, really hard to quit. He even, because well, I live in a different town from him. Right, but he was using. What was he using? Um... Pain pills mainly. All right. So he's an opiate addict, and he was using, and then he went into treatment. Yeah. And what's the question? Uh, well, anyway, whenever he went into treatment, I didn't hear from him for like two months because I guess he wasn't able. To this contact. is what I'm trying to figure out. What do you mean whenever he went into treatment? You when were... he went into treatment. He went in at first for detox, and then he got out, and he comes running to me, and he's all crying, and I'm there for him. I'm his shoulder to cry. I'm... No, that's not the way you handle this. Well, anyway, that that's enabling his opiate addiction. Well, he didn't do. He didn't use whenever he was around me. It was always whenever he went away from me. But anyway, during those two months that I didn't hear from him, I started talking to someone else. Mm-hmm. And this someone else has been out of town for like the past three weeks. All right. And we've been corresponding through letters because we believe that people really... I don't forget the philosophy. Part. Yeah, well, yeah anyway, Kelly, you, you yeah, really, you're, you, you, listen, right. whatever you think, it's not going to be particularly healthy. I mean, you've you're been with an opiate addict, well, and you're defending the way she's you got a, She got a new guy, right? Yeah, but he's going to be an alcoholic. You correspond through letters. Well, this guy um, 
sent me a letter proposing to me a really weird way to propose, but I guess it's thought that counts. We'll worry right. about it. But anyway, and this guy is a good guy. His dad is a preacher, and yep. he, he is. He's a good guy. He's an electrician. He doesn't yep. do drugs. He doesn't drink. Mm -hmm. All right, but you're not attracted to him. Did he at no, one time? No, it's not that. He's a sweet guy. I'm just, I'm confused because no, I he's don't a sweet. talk a man while he's down. No, I'm no, not no. going to do that. And I, I care about the guy, this guy I've been dating. All right, hold on a second. Did, did you, this new guy used to do drugs or alcohol? No. Never? No, he, he may have, you know, drink socially, have a few beers, but he doesn't. All right, here's the deal. If, what I don't understand is why if your boyfriend does not want you in his life in a real way, why hasn't he included you in the treatment that he's going through? He has. He's, he right. has. I am. Right. I talk to his family and stuff. No, no. It's not, you've got to go do the work, go to al -Anon, get a sponsor, work the steps. If you continue to grow alongside of him while he's growing in his program of recovery, then you could be a healthy choice for him when he gets out. Yeah, I've done a lot of research myself. It's just... Kelly? I'm scared oh, of it. Kelly, really. shut up. What you're with you? Don't get all sanctimonious on her, please. I'm not going to say... This, this, she's not li listen. No, I'm, she I'm, not listening, so what? Right, no then why do I listens. bother talking? The friend, listen. Right, hey, it's the, listen, you know, listen, listen. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly. Yes. I, I, I know Drew make, makes a point. He wants you to do the work, but I can't figure out if you want to do the work with the old guy or you're interested in the new guy. I care about the old guy because, for uh. one, no, I do, I do, I really do. He's I want you to say, what guy do you want, the old guy or the new guy? The new guy. Oh, Jesus Christ. The new what guy. What do you do? I you work customer hurt. service? You yeah, work? I can't hurt the old guy. Okay, you want the new guy. All right, then that's then it. That's fine. You are, you are not good for the old guy unless you are doing work. Okay. You, you will lead to him using opiates again, guaranteed, unless you are working on your own program of recovery to match up with him when he gets out. Hook up with the new guy, the new guy and have so. the old guy, have, have the new guy write the old guy a letter, or you write him a letter. You know. But could that lead to him going back to using whenever he? No, comes out? if he comes it's not out, your fault. You will. Your being with him will make him use again, unless you work a program of recovery. I know that, that is something you can't quite put your head around. That's how it works. Well, I've never been addicted to anything. Kelly, you're a codependent. You've been, you, whoever, let me just take a second on this. When somebody is in a relationship with an addict, they fit with that person the way a key fits into a lock. When they go into treatment, that person will change. They need to change rather dramatically. If they try then to get back together with a person that has not changed, that they were with when they were using, the person who they had been with in the past will push them emotionally back to where they were when they were using and will hurt, will be the source of a relapse for them. So unless you do work, you will be part of the, his problem when, when he comes out. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. So even though I'm not an addict, I need to... It has, uh, you're a codependent. You were in a relationship with him when he was using. Hold on, Drew. She's not an addict. Yeah, it has nothing to do uh, with your using at all. Uh, Kelly, just... What, you don't have any kids, do you? Uh, yeah. No. No. I don't know why I, you had to. I smelled that on you. Why? I thought you've been with this. Is it this guy's kid? No, no. Uh, of course not. It's okay. Relationship. Another All right. Yeah, what happened? What you, your, your dad daddy? was an alcoholic abuser. Uh, my dad. Yeah. Uh, I don't really. I can't really call my dad that. He goes out and parties every night. I. I, well, that seems I stayed at home and took care of my dad. All right. Well, that's, well, that's call, call that an alcoholic. Yeah, he needs. You don't want to call him an alcoholic, but he goes out and parties every well, I, night. He, he doesn't admit to it, and it's. I can't. Oh, okay. All right. Listen, listen. No more goddamn kids, please. No more kids, please. You, know, you need Alan. Not worse than anybody I've ever heard. <laughs> Period. <laughs> Go do it. Yeah, I'd like uh, Kelly to represent me if, if I was ever arrested for anything. It's like, uh, is your dad an alcoholic? I can't say that. I can't say that. He drinks every night. I can't say that. <laughs> I'd have to take care of him. I can't say that. He parties every night. I can't say that. But he never called himself an alcoholic. <laughs> Therefore, <laughs> he never called himself an alcoholic. Oh, baby, take care of that kid. No more kids. Please, no more kids. Oh, imagine that's your mama. Mary? Yes. You're 22? Yes, I am. What's up? Um, I dated a guy for about four and a half years, and we were, we were pretty serious, and... We ended it. Um, he doesn't live here anymore. And had several serious relationships, but it always comes back to him. Like, I just cannot move on. And it's been two years, and I just don't feel that that's really normal. 
Uh, but how long has it been ended for? Two years. How Two long? years it's been ended for. It was on for how long? Four and a half. And it wasn't wasn't on and off at all in the last two years. Uh, well, we talk, and if he comes to town, we'll like stay together. You have sex? Yeah. That's code for that, Adam. Well, well yeah, I don't. I, that's sort of, sort of like be together. Yeah. That's stay together is kind of weird. But well, how often does he come to town, and how often do you talk? Uh, we talk every like three or four months, and he comes to town like maybe once a year. So as you just seen him twice. In two years since you've broken up. Right. And you only talk a few times a year. Yeah. Uh, and how come you, what's stopping you from sort of calling him and pleading your case? Having a relationship again. Well, he's, he's living with his girlfriend right now. All right, so stop seeing this guy, cut it off. Don't, this is an addictive relationship. And he's, having, he's cheating on his girlfriend when he comes over? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I just, I feel like yeah, I can't I just stop. Feel talking to him i mean everybody i've well, I've like, well I've, hold on you see the guy twice a year i, I mean let's it's replace this it's not planned it's not like i yeah, know I, he's gonna be here it's just like bam he's here okay oh, like, hold on a second what's up with everyone the crazy like non sequitur defense that everyone's running tonight mm -hmm. you know i'm trying to make the point like she's like i'm obsessed with the guy but i can't stop them. thinking about it. i'm like well you only see the guy twice a year now i, I it, we don't plan it yeah. It's like, uh, okay, honey, can I make my goddamn point? I'm saying, what if you said, I'm, I'm an alcoholic, I can't stop the booze. How often do you drink? Twice a year. You know, I'm into heroin, I can't stop it, I can't give up the rig, I gotta chase the dragon. Twice a year. But if each time you did it, you got a DUI or developed hepatitis each time, you know, something horrible happened. Well, how many each times time? you're gonna get hepatitis? Oh, whatever. You got the B and the C, okay. You, you get Touché. something. something well, okay, awful. but. I, I know, and I understand that. I understand she's thinking about the guy a lot and everything. But twice a year and sort of, you know, he's calling her once every three months. I don't, I, I don't call it obsessive. I mean, it's, 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 I understand how women can do this. They can be passive obsessive, mm -hmm. whereas guys got to do stuff. Mm -hmm. Guys get drunk. I'm heading over there, getting in the bushes, going to park outside the house. You know, I'm going on a recon mission. Oh, God. I got buddies over there. I got to get them out. You know, we, we do yeah, stuff. I know. Women. But again, this you know, is... No, women would never... Women are good with their kids, but that's about it. You know, you know what I mean? You know, What's wrong? You know, Arab guy kidnaps like Wait, wait. Hmm. You know, we can pull stuff like this off with people with eating disorder. Mm, Mary. Yes. Eating disorder? No. Never? Well, I had for a while. Yeah. No! <laughs> <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> yeah. Drew, you can never, ever be wrong. Never. You can never be wrong. See, this is this is part of that syndrome, where the people with the hoarding, the eating, the bulimia, it, mm. it, it spills over into relationships and mm. sex, and they can carry this stuff out for long periods of time. It's very obsessive, and they they get the addictive quality in this is in the deprivation. They actually okay. de the deprivation they feel is like it's gratifying them in some way, yeah. it's just like the anorexia is gratifying. And this is what that is. This is an addictive relationship, not because of the compulsive element, but the, the deprivation you put yourself through. Okay. It's time to stop, Mary. Time to stop. Can you do that, Mary? I guess so. This All is right. part of the eating disorder syndrome. It's you know, our listeners would be great. Uh, actually, they'd be the world's worst guests on one of those psychic TV shows. Really. <laughs> I, I know. Yeah. Your, your we, dad. If, your dad's if, if dad. If the psychic TV shows had our guests, they would never be they, able to They'd be canceled anything. immediately. Yeah. It'd be like this. Your deceased father, his name was, his name was Robert. I'm getting an R. Robert. Robert. Was his name Robert? I'm getting, no, 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 no. We called him Bob. <laughs> I mean, it said Robert on his driver's license, but yeah, we called him Bob. <laughs> that, they'd go off the air. You're right. They'd all immediately go off the air. Uh, all right. We crack them. All right. Well, you know, I God bless them. They... Uh, most of the people that call this show when Drew makes the eating disorder allegation, they, they're, not, they're, I don't think they're being uh, like, ov they're not being overtly deceptive because if they're overtly deceptive, they stick with it. Yeah, no, it's like, you know, do you have an eating disorder? No, it's denied. No eating disorder? Yeah. No, didn't you used to have it? Oh yeah, that's, that's you know, I'm used to working with that with denial of patients. You know, right. that's a lot. Well, by the way, and. Uh, we talk about this from time to time. That's why we bang away a little bit. Like sometimes people accuse us. Like here, a lot of people say this about the show. 
Oh, well, Drew thinks everyone has an eating disorder. Drew thinks everyone is sexually abused. And then what he does is he keeps banging away on them until eventually they just say yes to shut them up so we can move on. And th that's, the, that's true 85% of the time, yeah. But there is a 15% where we, Drew feels something or I feel something. And, and it becomes, it's weird to feel something. You become like a mechanic who knows what's wrong with a car, but, but the symptoms aren't working. Like, you know there's an alignment problem, and you go, doesn't start shimming on the freeway like at high speeds? No. You yeah. go, wow, really seems like... Really? Never really? Been, yeah, no. except when it shimmies on the freeway, which is... Yeah, but you, you yeah. but, but at, like the mechanic would keep banging away yeah. if he was almost sure this was the problem. Yeah. This is what Drew does. He yeah. bangs away. We'll take a break. We'll be back. Yeah, this is my song. You all picture me walking in slow motion, leather jacket slung over my shoulder, shades, wrap around shades. I haven't heard your song in a long time. Whip, whipping off the shades in slow motion, checking out some hot chicks at the oh, bar. Oh, and here's yeah. the hot chicks look back and they see it's gone. Oh. <laughs> to warn us about that. True. You ever, you ever ask Anderson to do anything that he comes through with? Dickhead. I always do. No, Anderson does fine on his own. He just, it's just, let me ask you this, Drew. Yeah. Have you ever looked through the glass and asked producer Ann a question and had her answer you? You mean when I'm, yeah. Have you ever cued engineer Anderson to play something and had him play it? Have you, have you ever gotten a, an I, answer to any question I, on I this have, show? I but when it really goes bad is when I get the necessary build up. And then, no. Yes. Okay. I'm sorry I erased it because it got played out. We did it too much. All right, buddy. Uh, sorry. Hey. sorry. Anderson making executive type decisions on this show. Sarah? Do you know, do you know Anderson yeah. came and worked on this show? He does not have any engineering training. Came to work on this show because... All right, can we just go to Sarah? Come on. Wait a minute. This is interesting. Yeah. Because he liked this show. Oh, really? That's, he came the, here. This you know? show? It seemed to like this show sure. when he got here. Oh, Farrell. Farrell. Like I like Farrell. Farrell. I knew I was curious. <laughs> I knew he didn't like this but show. But came over here because he liked this show, too. No, no, no. <laughs> now he likes every show. No, he, All right. he used to like it's this show. It's a fine show. I he used, used to show. like this show. Anderson came to work here at Westwood 2, or Westwood None, as we like to call it, and... Uh, Came to work for Scott Farrell's sports show. He met him in a bar. I met him in a, like talking hockey, yeah. and uh, this sort of interned on the show and started learning the board and they, stuff. They invited me down, and I came one night, and I just never really left. That was it. Wow. Yeah. But uh, by that's, the way, that's by the way, how I started on this show. That's the way. Exact same way, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. That's the way uh, everything works. On radio, you just show up in radio, especially. Yeah. yeah. But a lot of jobs. Mm. Just get down there. Get get in there. Have people know you. I mean, that was, uh, how many years ago, Anderson? Oh, Jesus, like six. Six years ago, and now he's making 24 grand a year. 21. 21 grand a year. All right, people? Work. If that's not a success story, I don't know what is. So and then, and then they were going to yeah. put me on this show, and Ann's like, uh, is there anybody else? Oh, really? <laughs> and they went through like three or four names before they finally put oh, me in. so far. Well, we liked, uh, we liked our old guy, Dooley. Was Dooley was guy. officially a radio engineer type? Like no, radio probably. Film. Look at him. <laughs> That's a good point. Sarah? Yeah? You're 20? Yes. What's up? Um, I was at uh, a friend's house about two weeks ago and um, drinking quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the guys that I've considered a friend for a long time um, basically kind of started trying to have sex with me. Mm -hmm. And um, I told him I didn't want to. But he kind of didn't answer me. And then I just kind of gave up fighting him. And we ended up having sex. Mm -hmm. And I'm, oh, I don't know, it's kind of really messed me up. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been raped in the past? Mm -hmm. Have I what? Ever been raped before? No, it was it really rape. Yeah. Well, you, were, you were fighting him and then well, gave I wasn't. It. I wasn't fighting him. I, I was kind of too drunk to really mm. well he said i was fighting him and then well, i finally I said, gave in i said i said that i didn't want to mm -hmm. but i wasn't like physically fighting him mm. and i just kind of anything any trauma in the past gotta be something oh yeah i can hear it 
Yeah, probably. What, what's up? I mean, when you first start talking, I can hear it. I don't. I didn't know what the question well, that's was. That's why I figured she'd been raped before, too. Uh, well, I mean, I've just been really messed up for the past couple of weeks. I haven't been able to keep food down. And had uh, you ever been raped before? No. But you were well, sexually abused growing up, or something? Well, yeah, I was that. How old were you when that started? I was, um, oh, well, probably about five. And who was that did that? It was um, same guy. It was well, no, it, it was, was a, it was a girl actually, yeah. and she was oh, yeah. about maybe a year older than me. Oh, interesting. Mm. Really? Yeah. That's weird. Huh. It's weird. And a neighbor, friend, yeah. something like that. Yeah. And that, this was the only only time something like this happened. Well, when I was eighteen, my um, one of my cousins caught me drunk and made out with me. Just made out. Didn't have sex. No. Mm -hmm. And. uh... And what what was this girl doing with you? Was this a couple of times this happened? No, I don't really remember. It was a long time ago. Um, hmm. But it was enough where I felt kind of bad about it, and my mom yeah. found out about it and well, hold on. me to see her. Hold on a second. Let me talk to Drew for a second. There's one part of Sarah mm. that sounds like I was victimized, yeah. and then there's another part of Sarah that sounds like she's kind of making stuff. That's why making I, the victim yeah. case instead of except for not actually victimized to the extent that she's sort of portraying. I think she's missing where the victimization actually occurred. Probably she was physically abused or something else. Uh -huh. That's just sort of overlooking as well. That's just you know everyone gets that. Yeah, because like eighteen, you got drunk and made out with your cousin. No. That that most people that wouldn't even show up on the radar. No, but really. she feels like a victim. So yeah, Sarah. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Why? Why do you, do you feel like a victim? Well, um, when it came to my cousin, I did because that was like the the first hmm. time that but I ever. You know, nobody. Uh, forget about the sexual stuff. No yeah. physical abuse. No, no, no. Physical Everything was good. Yeah. No one ever hit you. No, no, never. All right. And this guy uh, you had sex with recently when you were drunk. Yeah. He's a friend of yours. Yeah, he was. Were you emotionally abused growing up? No. And this this friend of yours, uh, did, did you ever date him? No. Was, was he interested in you that way? I don't think so. He's a drug addict. He sells drugs. So he was he was high. Was I he high? I don't know. I don't know if he'd actually done drugs that night or not. Hmm. So he, you don't feel like he raped you though? Well, I I kind of feel like it was. I mean, people have been telling me that. Well, I don't know. People have been saying that it was rape. But I felt like it was my fault because I was drunk. Well, no. I mean, uh, you probably shouldn't have passed out drunk over there. Yeah. But it doesn't excuse what he did, and it still makes it rape. Right. At least technically it makes it rape. Yeah. But you never, didn't think about calling the cops or anything like that? No, because, I mean, people, I don't know, it feels kind of weird because people get drunk and have sex all the time. And even though I didn't want to have sex with him, yeah. I'm sure he doesn't think that he raped me. Well, well but, California, you, but you're telling... I know. Yeah. I, but you're telling us you said no, no, and tried to push him off. I, I said no once. Hmm. Uh, all right. Like I said, Sarah? Yeah. Well, well, I don't know what's up. I don't know if you're depressed. I don't think it's because of this. It seems like it's something else. Well, he's, she's traumatized by it. That's why I think there was some other trauma. This is sort of some PTSD <laughs> type stuff. But it doesn't... Yeah, I, know, right. I know, I know. Anyway, uh, the birth control, is there a chance you're pregnant? Um, no, I'm not pregnant. STDs? No. You, how do you know all this? Well, I went um, to a clinic and got tested. All right, so you've done the right thing. You would take the morning after pill or something? Yeah. All right, so you've taken okay. care of yourself properly. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't look like she's going to take care of this as though it were a rape. It's I too late now okay. to do much. Don't, don't drink and pass out. And yeah. don't hang out with the drug addict guy. And she may be having some consequences from her alcohol use. Maybe this is the beginning of a, that okay. disease for her. And like the guy, he, the guy, I don't know what to do with the guy. She's not going to call the cops. I don't know what the cops would really do. They're she, all lying I, around drinking. Where is her trauma? I swear to God, this is a trauma survivor. I'm like fascinated. I'm ne we're never wrong. But, uh, but maybe it's just depression. Mm, it is that, but Sarah? No, she hung up. Sarah? Right. Okay, good. Okay, good. Uh, let's see. What did I do? Punch the wrong one? Hello? Sarah? Yeah? So... We have this really strong feeling that something you were abandoned. True does. I do. You were abandoned, or something happened that sort of made you feel traumatized growing up. Did something happen? Um. Well, I. Yeah, I don't know. My. Uh, 
I know that, that I went to see my ex-boyfriend and he got kind of upset at me like after this because he felt like it was... No, I understand, but we, I mean, growing up, something happened, we were, you were abandoned or something or something? No. No, not really. All right. Go to shrink, baby. I, I am. I'm good. 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 Right. good. This sounds very depressed. Yeah. Ron? Yeah. You're 33? Yeah. Off drugs for six years. You want to know how to train your brain to remember short-term things? Yeah, I heard the conversation the other night about the guy that got struck by lightning. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. really, it, it just really interests me. Let me just briefly explain. I'd, I'd done drugs for quite a long time, right after high school. And then up through my 20s, from 20 to about 26, I was doing a lot of methamphetamine. And I knocked it off. I, I didn't seek any treatment or anything. I didn't go to a program, but I, but I did quit. I've been off of it for six years. And two things. I noticed a great deal of short-term memory where I'm constantly forgetting things. And I also notice um, from time to time I'll wake up and it's like I'll have vivid, vivid dreams of, of doing it. And I wake up and my heart's racing and, and I'm almost right. sweating to the point right. where, you know, and I'm thinking to myself, is this normal? After, Are you still smoking after, pot? I'm sorry? You still smoking pot? No, I do absolutely nothing now. Okay. I, I don't even drink food. Okay, all right. Um, well, amphetamine is well known to cause permanent memory problems. Permanent memory and mood problems. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Speed? The, speed causes about a 50-fold increase of dopamine and serotonin release, and in, in those concentration, that chemical actually breaks down and forms free radicals and will destroy the nerve endings. Free radicals, right. bad? Bad. And so, you know, this is a permanent thing, these memory problems that come from speed. They can get some right. Parkinsonian features, too. You can get a little Parkinson's-like. And they, they don't get better, unfortunately. In fact, the mood problems tend to get worse. In terms is there, of, is there any way to train like, your thoughts or your memory to, to help you try to remember things? That, it's know? like it's like reading or any other brain skill. You got to keep doing it. That you you will improve with use. I'm mean, think about how you trained your memory when you were growing up in school. And things you got better with use, but some of that brain function is just not there anymore. Well, I mean, should you get one of those games where you take all those cards and you flip them over and you try to match the socks with the socks and the cat with the cat, and then you flip the thing down again? You know that game? Yeah, I understand. I don't know of any, I'm sure somebody's studying this, I don't know of anybody that's shown any significant improvement in that. Uh, as far as the using dreams, those are very common, you're right, they're usually earlier in recovery, like in the first six months or so. Using dreams are usually, I consider, good, in that they sort of rehearsals for how you'd feel if you did use, and people usually wake up feeling guilty and awful. And it's interesting that it points out how powerfully reinforcing these drugs are, in that just with the thought of having used in a dream, you wake up high. They wake oh, up really? many of the physiologic effects, particularly cocaine. I do one of them. <laughs> Drew, you can't you can't work your brain out a little if you got one of those games that are for ten year olds where you match stuff. They're like memory yeah, games. You, you can, but you got to remember the brain ain't there anymore. The actual brain tissue's gone. I'm trying to give this guy something to hang his head. I, I, I understand. On. I so I would try all that, and I would certainly, you know, constantly challenge yourself. It, it can certainly get worse if you don't. How much better it can get? I, I've not known of any literature that shows how much. Maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe a lot. No, Ron, go. I'm telling you, go down to the game store, get one of these matching things, and see if you can work it yeah, out. Computer games, yeah, yeah, yeah. Literally, just do those uh, flip card things. I used to do it when I was a kid. That's why I'm a genius now. Oh yeah. All right, uh, who are we got to talk to? When we come back. Talk to Rachel. Is 20 had sex for first time in a long time last night. Bled unexpectedly. Ooh, well, interesting after this. Hey, everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That's Dr. Drew over there. I know this music's supposed to be really cool, but I think it sucks. I can't stand this song. Really? Yeah. I saw these guys on Saturday Night Live. Who is it? I don't know. White Snake. Who is it? I don't know. Why do you got to screw up the White Stripes every single White time? I just, this song sucks. It just, it just sucks. I, just they're, I like think they're it. one of the best bands to come out in the last six, seven years. I, I know, but they're just, they're for people that don't know that much about music to pretend like they're cool. So, so off, dude. <laughs> That's exactly right. I saw, were they on Saturday Night Live? How much do you know about music? You play is, the fish. Is it like two people? Yeah, it's brother, sister, yeah. married couple, I don't know. And they just sit there and look cool. I don't, I don't like them at all, and their fans are horrible. They but got a lot of attitude. Yeah, well, that's a great song, that drums and the guitar. <laughs> it's a hot tune. Drew, I love that song. Love it. Right? Hey, guys, how's it going? Yeah, that's cool. I don't want to... 
you know, listen, there's a handful of bands that you got to say are cool so people think you're cool. Yeah, like, Anderson like, does a lot of that kind of stuff. Yes, like what you got to do. That's so on me. <laughs> in, in I know the, that. I'm just the white stripes. Now. Here's what I'm saying. In the in the in the 80s, you had to say you were into like early REM, made you cool. Like Eraser. And uh, in in the 90s, you got to say uh, that you're. I'm trying to think of the band. Oh, true. Oh, Radiohead. You got oh. now, you recently you got to say you're into Radiohead. That's about five years ago. That makes you cool. And we're starting to get into like the white stripes for the make you cool band. All right, Rachel, Thank what's going you. on? Rachel's right. 20. Hey, no, no one ever argues with you, by the way, either. <laughs> you, go, you just go like this. You go, what are you into? Well, I was in, the, I was in the R, early REM, then I got in Ray Hand, I got in White Stripes. And everyone goes, oh, yeah. yeah cool. Yeah, and er, some early, early, uh, oh, uh, L Lou, uh, Lou Reed. Early it's Lou all Reed. About Durand, early Durand, Lou Reed. All the time, Duran Duran. Early Lou Reed. I was in Lou Reed. No one ever argues. It's because no one knows a Lou Reed song. Right. Lou Reed doesn't know a Lou Reed song, but everyone just nods their head. Oh, yeah, Lou Good Reed. Time. No, I'm cool. This guy must know something. <laughs> Quick go. All right, go ahead, Rachel. Hey, how you guys doing? I'm in the Lou Reed, yeah. <laughs> I want to say you guys are awesome, Adam. It is such a pleasure being able to talk to you. I think you're so fabulous. Thanks, baby. Is it true that you're getting married? Yes. Oh. About two months ago. Well, oh, I thought you meant again. <laughs> We get married again in about six years, I figure. Six, seven years. What Sorry, about that, baby. Uh, virginity? Um, How's your virginity doing? Yeah. <laughs> My virginity left me. Mm. What do you What do you like? Just uh, flew away like an owl in the night? No. Um, I lost. I meant, meant while guy was porking the bejesus out of you. <laughs> what do you look like? You sound hot. <laughs> well, actually, it's funny because I really want to be a juggy. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, you sound cute. Yeah, the, I like saw that you guys had auditions. I was so bummed because I missed them. Yeah, well, you snooze, you lose, baby. I know. All right, um, anyway, we'll get married in a few years. What's up? <laughs> well, um, I lost my virginity like about six months ago or so. Mm -hmm. And after that, I had sex a mm -hmm. lot. And then I stopped having sex like about three or four months ago, and I had sex for the first time last night again, and then I, I got around today, I came back from school, and I realized I was bleeding. Mm-hmm. Like having your period? No, it was, it was different. Mm-hmm. Like stab wound? Um, I don't know. Uh-huh. And you never been stabbed before? <laughs> never put a shit, had someone put a shit in can you? Okay, uh, and, and you say you had sex a lot. Same guy or different guys? It's a different guy. This is I know, now a different guy. This is now a different, but when he had sex a lot, was it? The same guy. Same guy. Okay. Uh, well, listen, the, having sex can stimulate bleeding either immediately right after you've had sex or it can even bring your period in if, you know, like a week or two early even. Okay. So th it's not that big a deal. Are you on the pill? I'm sorry? Are you on the pill? No. What are you doing for birth control? I haven't been able to do anything. Oh. It made me crazy and it affected my work. <laughs> the pill made you crazy? Mm hmm And plus, like, I... The facilities around here, I don't have a doctor and because I'm not going to be living here for very long. And the facilities around here are only open, like, when I'm at school. Are, are you UC Santa Barbara? Hmm? Or the city college? Yes. UC Santa Barbara? Yes. Why don't really? You, why You're don't you gaucho? Go? I'm sorry? You're a gaucho? <laughs> why don't you go to the student no, house? No, 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 wait no, a minute. She's Santa Barbara the, City. You're going to city college. Huh? City <sighs> college. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes, yes. You, well, tr you tried to uh, tell us you were going to UC Santa Barbara. Well, I'm not even doing that. Yeah, I listen. I, 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 well, listen, I, we, we know junior college when we hear it, baby. Okay, that's fine. All right. <laughs> we're, we're, not, Drew, we're not even wrong when someone tells us what college you're going to. <laughs> Hi, I'm going to Harvard. No, you're not. <laughs> You've been there for six semesters. No. No way. She lives in Santa Barbara. It's not a wild stretch to think a 20-year-old girl is going to UC Santa Barbara, but... I'll make it further. I bet she's going to cosmetology school, shall I? Oh, really? Yeah. You don't think she's going yeah. to junior college, Rachel? Yeah. Junior college or specialty college? Specialty? No. Drew's holding his hands up, but he's a robot, well, and he doesn't understand inflection. <laughs> what is... What is feel, it's kind of like a private school. Uh-oh. What do you study? What do you study? Acting. Acting. So you go to like an acting type academy in Santa Barbara? 
Not even in Santa Barbara. <laughs> where are you? Uh, Oxnard? Huh? Where are you? Where? I don't want to say. You don't want to say. Not, you're not calling from Santa Barbara, then? No. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. <laughs> screwed us all up. All right, but the guy was right, though. Huh? I mean, it's just a specialty. Not cosmetology <laughs> school, but... Yeah. All right, baby. How about, about good times, right? You need to get some birth control. It's been five days. You said it was Saturday night, so the morning after pill really isn't going to work, but you could get pregnant here, right? That's a cute chick who's nice, by the way. Yeah. Dumbest box of rocks, but nice. Like, you know, we talk about that hot chick who's bitchy. Yeah. It's about 90%. Right. Once, in a while, once in a while, there's just... Super nice and hot. Right. That's nice. It's a good combo. All right. We'll uh, take, a, take a break, and then we'll get back. We'll find out uh, someone knows why there's two flashes on the uh, stoplight cameras after this. Hey, Love Line. Now, there's a good riff. White Stripes. The Stripes, but... Uh, now, this is the band that everyone thinks sounds like the Stripes. I mean, oh, who is this? The Vines. Oh, the Vines. Yeah, see? Yeah, there's a riff. Yeah. Like that. Yeah, that's rock there, baby. Good time. Tyler? Yeah. You're 14? 16. No, 16. Yeah. First hand was blocking the age thing. What's up there, buddy? Uh, nothing. Oh, you know why they're uh, two? Yeah, I got, uh, ran a red light, got the uh, camera flash thing ticket the other day, but uh, hasn't shown up yet. And I'm thinking uh, maybe it's because I didn't have the front license plate on. No, it's just your, your pigs are lazy. Pigs. Pigs. <laughs> Interesting. Hey, yeah. how dare you call them pigs? Get what, on uh, your knees, scumbag! <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, there's two flashes. Why? Yeah, yeah. one takes, uh, takes a picture of where your license should be. And uh, one takes a picture of your mug, your, your, where your, where yeah. your head should be. Yeah, that's true. This, they take two pictures. So your face, you right. Got your, you got your mug at the uh, police department over there. Yeah. And what, is just to make sure that you were the one actually driving the car? Or? Yeah. Oh, I don't yeah. know. It's just some over... Yeah, they just take two. But that, it doesn't matter if your wife's driving the car, yeah. whatever. The ticket goes to wherever the car's registered. Really? Yeah, sure. If someone steals your car. That's weird. The, whoever's driving is the one guilty of it. Yeah, it would seem that way, but it, it goes... You gave him the car. You, you gave him the car. the car. So it's your fault, you know? Yeah. All right, bear buddy. Good times. All right, I don't, I don't have to spout all that uh, I love you, Dr. Drew and Adam stuff, do I? It'd be nice, yeah. Well, yeah. you guys are cool guys, but I'm, I'm not writing your name on my shoe or nothing. But you love us. Mm, yeah. Yeah? Yeah? No. Come on, buddy. There's love. I'm There's different kinds of love. It doesn't all have to be gay love. This is yeah, agape I, love. I understand that, but uh, this not is, eros, but agape. This is agape love. What's that true? Like spiritual love. Spiritual love. Yeah. This isn't lustful love. Adam, you're 18. Uh, John. It's John. All right, John. Uh, what's up? Says Adam on the screen. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to tell you that I, I think you've you got really the wrong impression about all these uh, new bands coming out. I think they're just really great and got really fresh, fresh kind of new sound. And right. I was actually going to suggest you guys should get one of them on. All right, we'll do that. <laughs> no, they're they're really awesome. You guys really. I'm sure they'll be on. All right. Yeah. Well, it's not. It's not like we don't have. Oh, really. It's not like we don't put new bands on the show. But actually, both those bands passed on the show. And producer Ian just whispered in our ear. Oh, yeah? Yeah, so screw them. <laughs> All right. Oh, well, well anyway. Good, good times there, buddy. Yeah. Keep playing them. They're awesome. All right. I'm going to do that. Let's uh, talk to... Uh, uh, One more ticket, well, ticket question. Oh, yeah, no. Frank? Frank. Hey, what's up, boys? You're 38. How you doing, Double D? What's up, man? Oh, yeah. You're uh, you're the guy who drives a Camaro and has uh, sex with the entire family of your girlfriend, <laughs> right? Frankie Camaro. What happened with that? You leave that? Right, real quick, uh, Dr. Drew. It's weird. I, I, I just wanted to say hello to you, but uh, I'm sorry, Adam. It's weird because I had gotten the same ticket. What happens is it takes about a month because um, I went through in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. they, they don't even, the cops will get run over, so they have the same thing. They have the photo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the guy who called just before is totally wrong. It doesn't take a picture of the face or anything like that. It, what it does is it takes an instant picture when the right light turns red. It takes a picture of the front of the car, then like it waits maybe a second, or it's either half a second to a second to a second and a half, and takes a picture of the back of the car. 
and it, it zooms right in and gets the license plates. Yeah. I had it and I seen it. And the reason it's not a regular red light, it's a $50 ticket because they don't know who's driving. It could be someone who snuck your car out, your girlfriend, but it does go go to the registered person you are, right? Yeah, but you're calling from New York, right. and I, you know, I had a buddy who got one out here, and it was like 200 and change. No, 50 bucks, because like I said... Wait. First off, <laughs> there's no such thing in California as a $50 well, ticket for... That's 100% right. I'm just talking strictly New York, so you're 100% right. All right, so it might, be, it might be different out here, because over... See, in New York, they have rapid transit that's usable, so they probably don't do the kind of raping that they do... <laughs> Right. Here in Los Angeles, in Los Angeles, best, basically right. what they do is they have there's zero rapid transit available. Right. You are f confined to your car. You must use your car. So and get now you. let the raping begin. <gasps> I, I, I <gasps> yes, and I then apologize. there's there, thank you. And there's because no, yeah, I am coming from a, a New York point of view. Yeah, right. I want to hear about the mom and the dog. Uh, there's certain certain cities such as a uh, rape bank. <laughs> or Burbank, as some people still... The old people call it by the old name, Burbank well, sometimes. I haven't but heard that in a long time. There's places like Rape Bank, yeah, speaking who, of rape who, are, bank. who are number one in raping citizens. Speaking of Rape Bank, how about that girl? Oh, I said no, but then it was... Uh, <laughs> then they let him do it. I mean, yeah. people... Are crazy. And then the other guy... Yeah, yeah. The other girl says, oh... Yeah, he likes to have sex uh, four times a month. What are you out of your mind? I'd be down that thing. Every oh yeah. Anyway, well, you're going down on. You know, the, you're nailing the dog, the mom. Anyway, real quick, let me get to my the, other thing. The baker, the candlestick you guys, maker. You guys try, said to try to get out of that. Well, that's what I've been trying to do. Yeah. Now the thing is this: I met somebody else. Yeah. But I wanted to say to Dr. Drew Adam because I know what you're going to say. Yeah. Which is great, but um, <laughs> from a healthy standpoint, Dr. Drew, um, um, I met a girl, 33. She has a kid really nice everything seems to be together and everything now should i come out of this other one and go into something hold like on, that? you met you met another girl yeah okay when frank oh, wait, hold on I'm, hold on quiet down oh, thank god for that uh, hold button when frank called the show a couple weeks back he was having sex with his girlfriend and his girlfriend's mom right okay just want to make sure everyone's up to speed on young and Frank. And we told Frank to get the hell out of there. And that's fine. You can have another relationship once you get the hell out of that current mess. Right. All right, that's fine. Is that, that what you're... about a month and a half ago when I first called. Then about two weeks ago I called. Yeah, yeah. And you were... You, were, you had told me that, you know, you guys said that you, Dr. G said to get the hell out of it. So that's what I've been trying to do. Trying to bust away from that. But then I meet somebody else now. Well, you know what? I'll really? tell you what. If, if, just, all right, okay. If this new relationship gets you out of that old mess, fine. No, but you know what's scary? You're going to do all three. Her mom's too uh, old for you to no. F. What's scary? <laughs> no, 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 listen. The only reason that ever happened was because it was totally situational. I sure, would do it in another situation. All right. It had to be perfect. But anyway, this new one, everything is perfect. You know, nothing's perfect, but everything is good. Because usually I meet these girls that, you know, are a little crazy, younger. Everything's good about this girl, but what do you recommend about the kid? It's an 8-year-old, 8- uh, to 10-year-old kid. And it, well, you can't you can't f the kid for about another four right. years. I mean, that's just Adam, man. What? That's why you are the best, Adam. I heard you on Stern. I mean, you know, you you you're slowly becoming a legend. Hold on, Frank. Frank, you listen to Howard Stern. I'm shocked. Who, I'm shocked. Are you shocked, bro? Oh, I I pick I pick Frank for a KCRW man. Oh yeah, the classical. Stuff. Morning becomes eclectic. Classical and public radio. That's it. It's all Frank listens. All what right. are you talking about? Uh, How listen. dare you? Frank, as far as the kid goes, here here's the thing. If if you no, know, I just wanted to know about it is it because it, it, you know she's well out of the father's well. Uh, they thought that was ten years ago, eight, whatever it was, eight. Well, listen, coming in and out of kids' lives is destructive to the kids. If you're going to develop a relationship with a child, you want to be around for years. Either that, or don't have a relationship with the child. Just well, date the girl. take it take it slow. Take it slow, and yeah. Don't bond with the kid until you know you're serious about the relationship. Exactly, exactly. This, this, you know, really stay away from the child. And at the point which you do develop a relationship, then you got You got to follow through. You got to stay with it for a long time. Now here's the whole thing uh, about this uh, camera and the intersection ticket thing. Yeah. The whole thing about the uh, back plate thing. I didn't see any flash behind me. I saw two flashes yeah. in front of me. Right. And if you look at the way they're situated in the intersection, they don't seem to have a camera that faces the back. It faces no. the front of all four directions. That's right. So I'm wondering if there's a back one. I also know this is why they want you to have a front license plate. Dallas? Yeah. You're 16? Mm-hmm. What's up? 
um, a while back ago, mm-hmm. I was skateboarding, and I fell while I was grinding. You and fell I, while you're, you were skateboarding? Mm-hmm. Grinding, like on a, on a oh, grinding, bar, grinding. Yeah. Oh, yeah, bad times. Yeah. Bad times. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, <laughs> really bad times. And I gassed over my clitoris. Gassed your clitoris? Mm-hmm. On, on, the, on the bar you were grinding on? Yeah. Because I don't even have a clitoris and it hurts. Uh-huh. That's brutal. And what happened? Blood started pouring from that area? Yeah. Woo. Like shot. Jesus Christ. Can you imagine standing yeah. around there, Drew? What were you wearing? A um, pair of pants. Were they light in color? Yeah. Wow, it's like Carrie. They were white. Were they? Uh-huh. Nah. It was like, it didn't hurt at first, but then all of a sudden it felt like excruciatingly painful. Oh, right, what's the question? <laughs> Um, it hurt at first, and then it, got, it went painful after that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But, um, and what'd you do? I went to the hospital. They and st- stitch it up? Yeah, they stitched it Where'd up. Where'd they put the stitches? All the way across the cut. Yeah. But, across the cut? Mm-hmm. She tore her cut. Yeah, yeah. I kn- hold on. I know they put the stitches across the cut. I mean, they're not, what are they going to do? <laughs> stitch your eyelids shut when you <laughs> She's vagina is clit? Did you say clit or cut? Across the cut, where it cut open, they stitched it together. Anderson, please, never, get, never gets old for you, does it? <laughs> okay, and the cut was was it in the on the clitoris? Uh huh. Or did it sort of tear the clitoris from its base? It, no, it was across it. Okay, hold on. I don't know, Drew. Is that even possible? Or can you sort of rupture it, like smash it? You, uh-huh. you know what I mean, like. Uh-huh. I don't buy the part where it was a I cut think, on I bet it, you but she just she just cut above across, you know, the skin area above. Yeah, like caught the hood. Yeah, was it the hood of the clitoris? Yeah. Uh, very agreeable. Very agreeable. The zipper caught it. Was it the trunk? The zipper caught it. Mm-hmm. Where the zipper fell down. Yeah. Uh. Ripped it across. It was the trunk. It wasn't actual. It was the trunk. The same thing to me, but you cut across. Across the trunk. trunk. Across the lip. I was being funny. The hood and the trunk. Oh, oh, I see. It's, it's all the same organ to me. <laughs> it hurt. Yeah. Okay. All right. What's the question? How many stitches? Like fifteen across, mm. all the way, all the way across. Fifteen oh, is uh, mm-hmm. they, they could have sewed you shut with fifteen. It right, went from one side to the other. Yeah. What's the question? Well, after I got the stitches out, it started going numb and blue. Well, it's just swollen. Blue is just blood under the tissue. And it, it, the numb part keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Like, it, at first, it was just the general area. Yeah, well, you, you crushed a nerve, and then you've got whatever swelling was occurring, and, the yeah, the, the nerve is not going to work so good. How long ago did this happen? Like, seven months ago. It doesn't necessarily mean, oh, seven months. Mm-hmm. Still all discolored and swollen? Yeah. My doctor keeps saying, no big deal, no big deal, it'll go away. Have you told them about the feeling change? Mm-hmm. And what do they say? No big deal, it'll, it fix itself. Yeah, and there's not much they can do. Here, here's the deal. You can't really repair nerves. They're either going to repair themselves or they're not. There's nothing really? you can do to help that along. However, just as a sort of a word of encouragement, there is all kinds of female genital mutilation procedures done throughout the world and, mm. and they've studied this a little bit now and even women that have their clitoris excised where do they do that like sweden <laughs> netherlands luxembourg uh-huh yeah 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 what uh where do they do that africa yeah and where else in parts of the middle east oh shocking i am flabbergasted drew those such wonderful utopian countries don't no, not all right huh that's why I have floored Drew. Parts of the Middle East and Africa. Who knew? Go ahead. So anyway, the women that have their their clitoris removed mm-hmm. still have sexual functioning, mm-hmm. still mm-hmm. orgasm and things. Uh huh. So that's where the can uh, be okay. That's where the uh, female genitalia mutilation goes on. Those yeah, countries, right. it's amazing. Well, but uh, every every place is equally great. Anthony. <laughs> yeah. Hi. You're 18. Yeah. Yeah, it's just certain countries are into the female genital mutilation. You're uh, 18, and uh, you know how to beat one of those camera tickets? Yeah, see, you have the constitutional right to uh, confront anyone that's against you. Mm-hmm. And I'm not, I have to see the ticket to know for sure, but you can make a demur, that's what it's called. It's a pretrial motion. Mm-hmm. 
and you basically say that you want to confront who, you know, go to the citation, mm-hmm. and since they can't, you know, haul the camera into court, you would bet the uh, legal ground. Mm-hmm. Yeah, interesting. They'll never yeah. work, but an interesting angle. Well, I mean, yeah. you also, you have to appear in court normally when you get a ticket because you sign the thing. That's why they make you sign it, and if you don't sign it, they haul you in. Well, the, how it works out here in Los Angeles now is the, uh, the whole part about they, they've really eliminated the part where you show up and go to court and do all this stuff. It's really just it's pure generation of income. So they just start sending you stuff, and you just you just send them checks. Like, you get tickets, you know, like, yeah. you used to get, like, fix-it tickets and stuff like that, where, I mean, there was a time in this uh, great land of ours, known as Los Angeles, and probably the same for other places across the country, where... They actually were interested in fixing whatever was broken. Mm -hmm. Like, if you were driving and they stopped you because you had no license plate or you had a taillight out or something, you would actually have to get it fixed. Then you'd go into a highway patrol station. You'd have an inspector inspect it. He would sign off that, yes, you had this fixed. And there wasn't a charge because the plan wasn't to make money. The plan was to get your taillight fixed. Now... You just send them a check. <laughs> they don't really care whether you fix it or not. It's all just about uh, raping the citizens. It's just, it's, just, it's just a way to generate income. There's zero public transportation, and uh, there's a goddamn parking meter on every corner, and uh, they're no longer, uh, are, are they not valid on uh, Saturdays and Sundays anymore like they used to. you got to feed them on Saturdays and sometimes Sundays, I'd imagine. And there's like a red arrow everywhere, and it's just there's a camera everywhere. Certain certain places worse than others, such as Rape Bank, <laughs> known as uh, formerly known as Burbank. But it's just about squeezing everyone for money. That's it. And my whole point is, is just tell us the money you need so we can get to our goddamn business, and so you guys can stop crime instead of busting people for expired tabs and tail lights and things like that. It, it drives me berserk, oh, Drew, as you know. Peter. Yeah. You're 22. I sure am. What's up? Um, I just have a general question. Um, my girlfriend and I, you know, I think we, we do pretty well um, pleasuring one another. But, you know, I, I think we're trying to go in a new direction here. And i am just got some general questions about anal stimulation for both male and female. Yes. All right. That's, hey, what your questions are. Um, you know, essentially, what's just the best way to get started and the best way to go about it? And well, who's stimulating who? Well, I think... Um, you know, it's a, like I said, we have a good relationship, so I th- like to think we could both pleasure one another. Mm. Mm. Who's motivated this? Uh, uh, it's ex- mutual. Mutual, which is you talk about it and she pretends to listen? Or? No, no, no. I, you know, in, in all honesty, she's the one that brought it up. Oh, right. Really? That's the question. And she wants to do stuff to you? Um, you know, like, it just mm-hmm. right now we just have general curiosities. I'm I not see. against anything. Sure. Yeah. What uh, did she bring up? Just, um, you know, insertion. Um, in you. And, and myself and into her. You know, she Marge. brought that up right away. She went when from the Sorry. beginning. From the beginning, when she brought this interest up, she was talking about both of you. Absolutely. And, uh, and she wants to put stuff in you, as as well as have things put into her. All right. Mm-hmm. What about Tristan Taramino's book? Oh yeah, remember her, the yeah. anal queen. Yeah. The other thing is, is uh, if you're interested, if anybody is interested. And uh, having something uh, put up them rectally, all you got to do is uh, exp- exceed the speed limit by four <laughs> miles an hour in the city of Burbank, and they pull you over and rape you. Well, oh, it's BF Bank, yes. It's, it's a right. symbolic raping, yeah. but nevertheless, it's it's an anal raping that goes on in that city. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so I can't wait till they, one of those cops tries to kill me. Huh. Hey, uh, Peter, yeah. what are you talking about putting a uh, butt plug in your butt? No, well, I mean, that's what... We've done some recent... You know, obviously, we'd like to go get cleaned out, you know, get one of those kits, and you can get yourselves cleaned out. Yeah, how do those kits work? Yeah, well, I, I haven't tried one yet. I uh, haven't tried one yet, but... Uh, are you talking about, like, an anima kit? We're not... Yeah, an anima kit, you can... I, I believe you can get them at, you know, your local pharmacy, so... Yeah. Yeah, we're, we want to go about this in the right so way. So you clean yourself out with the kit, and then you, you test out. Now, what about her using a strap-on on you? Um, it, you know, it wouldn't be my first idea, <laughs> but at the same point in time... <laughs> you, you, you're, you're open. I, I, I've gotten... I'm not ashamed of anything. Right. So. Well, 
I'd say uh, with her, it's pretty easy because you have a penis to put That's in true. her. That's but true. with her, it presents a little bit of a challenge. Let's say a little vibrator act. You know, I mean, uh, don't do anything, you know, no bowling pins or uh, cans of corn, you know what I mean? Well, he's open for anything, Adam. He's, he's interested, whatever. He's open. I know, but you gotta, you gotta, you know, they don't make strap on butt plugs, do they? <laughs> oh, no. Why not? I don't know, why not? You know what a butt plug looks like, Drew? Like an ace of spades. Oh, Drew. Right? Yeah. It does, let's just look like a sort of spade yeah. on it, but it has a little base. It's important to have a base when it you make butt plugs because they don't, they don't come back out. I remember when I was, uh, when I had my first apartment in North Hollywood, crazy guy lived under me named Al, middle-aged guy, <coughs> had his dog Skipper, he used to walk around with a windbreaker on, drinking, uh, drinking a beer, had one of those foam beer koozies, you know, those things that... You know, you know what amaze, you know what always amazes me is when people hang on to ten cent items for twenty eight years. Like this was like first off, it was a it was a beer that I don't think they made anymore, like Primo, uh -huh. or it was maybe it was like Hams or something, but it was clearly from the seventies. Yeah, and it was foam. Yeah, styrofoam. You know, styrofoam. Yeah, styrofoam. Yeah. It wasn't the new it wasn't the new fangled right. beer koozie. It was the old school foam one. And, you know, you could see where the guy's handprint had worn into the thing, like the Colorado River car carving out the Grand Canyon over millions of years, you know. And it was like gold. It was like Coors or Hams or something. And he used to walk out and he'd drink this beer every day. He wore these thick glasses, wore a windbreaker. And he lived underneath us in our first apartment. His name was Al. And he was like, the, like something out of a something out of a sitcom like he was a lonely guy who lived alone and his job was to take care of the apartment and he was meticulous and crazy about it but he really saw it as a form of celebrity huh. and i like i remember he'd walk around with this beer koozie and his dog skipper all day had this mangy was he drinking mangy beer? mud of a dog well he'd go to work and then he'd come home at like 3 o'clock. He worked at like McDonnell Douglas or something. He had this job at like a factory. And then he'd come in, he'd be out there with his windbreaker and be watering. And he was a creepy guy in the sense that, like, I had room. I, I didn't get laid much, but there was a lot of young chicks running in and out of the apartment. And uh, he was always sort of interested, and he'd stop by coincidentally when the girls were over. And, uh, oh, the day his dog Skipper died. Oh, that was a very <laughs> sad, sad day for Al. Al cornered me on the front lawn after drowning his uh, sorrows with a couple of beers and really let loose about Skipper. And it was a very, very uncomfortable oh. situation. Oh, no. Also, Al would not, after living there for two years, would not lend me his hose. Al had a hose, but it was no just regular 50-footer. It was the one that was on the spool. Yeah, yeah, you know, the PVC yeah, plastic yeah. one with the crank handle and the wheels on it. Yeah, sure. It was like the hose dolly. This thing must have been 65 bucks at the Home Depot. And uh, he kept it in his house, you know, because... How would you, did you want that for? It's a big ticket item. I wanted to hose off my porch. Uh -huh. And I was like, hey, Al, let me borrow the hose. And I was looking at it through his screen door inside of his apartment, and he was like... What hose? Oh. And he kind of slid in front of the door, to block it. I was like, uh, and he was he would lean as I would lean. I was like trying to look over his shoulder. I was like, that hose? Oh, that hose? No, no, no. I I can't let you. I'm like, I'm just going. First, I'm gonna be right above you. We're right upstairs. Yeah, yeah. That hose was given to me by uh, Jim, the owner, and. Uh, I told him, I, you know, I can't let that out of my sight. Now, if you want me to come hose it off, we can schedule that. But, uh, no, I can't let the hose go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I did. I just felt bad. I was like, give me the hose. I'll just hose it off. No. No, no. No. He used to carry a piece. Oh, no. He was one of these guys. He, 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 I'd, he, I'd have these. Uh, he, he was always, he was always, come, whoa, he loved chicks. Anyway, some, <laughs> you know, he was always one of these guys who was like, I don't know if you ever run in these guys. The guy was like 55. He's all greasy, thick glasses, carrying around the beer koozie and the mangy dog skipper. And he'd always say, like, I see those young girls heading up to the up to your place. Send one of them down one of these times. Like, <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, sure. Hey, uh, Jill, come here. Yeah. What are you doing? Nothing. Listen, I want you, uh, what are you, 19? Yeah, great. Uh, head down and F out. 
He's uh, here, he's a guy with the uh, he's a guy with the uh, the uh, special. He's got the special shoes. One heel's a little thicker than the other. He's got yeah. He's got yeah. He's got the hose in his mm. living room. Yeah, that's the guy. Give him a good effing, would you? Oh real? Oh hey, what's with the attitude? Come on. He said I told him we'd send somebody down. Oh. You know those guys who do that. You, said, you throw, said that to him? No, no. But you know those guys that like throw one my way thing. Yeah, that's like, crazy. Like, that's actually what you're gonna do. Yeah, that's crazy. Oh, the day skipper died. Uh oh. Yeah, it was tough. I was in a hurry. I was trying to get out of there. I was on my motorcycle. Had the helmet on and the motorcycle running and everything. And Al caught me. Skipper died. I was like, oh, that's rough. We're all going to miss Skipper. Now i got to leave. And he's like, talk meant a lot to me. <laughs> I'm like, uh, now it's, it's at the commitment. Like, do I, get, do I take the helmet off now? I got the bike running. Do I shut it down? Like, is, or, or should I keep the inertia going? Yeah. And Al will never forgive me. The beer koozie trembling in his hand. Oh. Sixty-five dollar hose in the background. Where is Al now? <laughs> I want to meet Al. <laughs> and the comedy is, is his son would stay in his place like once every six months when Al would go out of town for a few days. Same guy. Wearing the blue windbreaker, <laughs> slick back hair, and the beer coos, except for this guy was thirty. Oh, it was perfect. All right, we'll be back. Oh, oh, oh. Uh oh. This guy Al, one of the guys in the apartment moved out, and this guy turned out to be a crazy perv. Who? Who? I don't know who it was. I mean, it was a six-unit building. Or one of the guys moved out in our building, and he turned out to be a perv. Yeah. And Al had to clean out the guy's unit. Oh. And Al showed up one day with a huge box of butt plugs, oh. dildos, dongs, cranks, everything, and just hand it right to us. And I thought you guys could use it. And it's like, oh, it's like a little, yeah, thanks, Al. Was he laughing? We'll send one of the ladies over with the strap on. Yeah. Yeah, he was laughing, but it's it's, it's a little oh, creepy, yeah. a little creepy. All right, we'll uh, take nice a life. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, we'll take a break. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody! It's Loveline. I'm uh, Adam. That's Doctor True. Phone number one eight hundred L O V E one nine one. All right, you ready to get uh, get going on the phones here? Yeah. Alan. Yes. You're twenty. Yes. Um, I was with a girl for a year. Mm-hmm. And uh, we broke up about three months ago because uh, her stepdad got a new job, like uh, in the Bay Area. Mm-hmm. And um, well, uh, we're having unprotected sex towards the end. Mm-hmm. And uh, she's now three months pregnant, and that was like right when she uh, moved. Mm-hmm. She's uh, she's with some new guy now, and she says that if if the kid's mine, then uh, that the new guy's gonna be your uh, the dad. Yeah. All right. And she she, I don't I don't know what to do. You know? Is that a relief for you, or do you want to be involved in this child's life? Well, no. I, if it's mine, if it's mine, first I want I would like to see if it, you know if she wanted to get an abortion because I mean I'm not really ready. Well, it's, all right. It's been kid. been three months. But so you'd rather have her get an abortion than have her raise the child with someone else? Yeah. What is that logic? I don't get that. Why? Well, because he's going to feel if if she has a kid and he's not around, he's going to feel guilty. Yeah, but somebody's going to. Well, if I if if she has it, I don't want I don't want my kid to be calling somebody else dad. So you'd rather have the child dead. Well, dead's a harsh word, Drew, but right. not exist. Yeah. You'd rather have it dead. Well, I mean, it's not like, it's not fully... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's not, not, it's not, it's not, not like, like he's going to stab the kid on his first birthday. Yeah, it's, it's not like it's uh, eight months old or nothing. Like that. Right. Yeah, but you'd rather have it, dem you know, destroyed, let's say, than raised by someone else. Well, I I go my whole life trying to find my kid. Why? And wondering. Well, you why? know where the kid is. <laughs> it was raised yeah. by someone who's prepared to be the father. She doesn't. It's, it's not having to do with that. She just doesn't want me to. She doesn't want me to be the. You know. Yeah. What, what, but what if? The, as long as you know that there's good parenting or appropriate parenting, and you're not ready to have a kid, what's the what's the issue? Yeah. I don't, it's just knowing that my offspring's out there. And why is that troubling to you? Because if I have a kid, I want to be a good dad, and I want to free... I want well, you, you can't be. You're not prepared to be. So, let's have somebody do it who's prepared to be. Yeah. 
the yeah. thing is, I won't even, I, I, she won't even, like, get tested or nothing or like that, like, to see, like, who is the, the father or whatever. All right, well, why don't you assume it's the new guy? How much, what, well, what, the, the what the physically, is, what's the new guy look like? I have no idea. She's, like, real far away. But, uh, they've, they've only been together, like, two months. How are you going to be a father if she's way far away? He's not going to be a father. He doesn't want to be a father. He just doesn't want someone else being a father. Right. Yeah, it's it's, it's kind of selfish male thinking. That's fine. Yeah, That's what way, way you think when you're 20. Well, well, from, how about thinking from the standpoint of the child, Alan, and not you? The child would rather have a chance at life. No, but he looks at the child as him. I, that's the problem here. That's what I'm getting at. All right. Well, he knows he's going to be a bad dad. Well, no, not, not that. It's just I'm, like, young and I don't have my career yet. No. Yeah, but how about looking at it from the standpoint of the, of the child and not you? The child would like a chance at life. Well, yeah, I, I don't think she'd be, she would be for it anyways. But so, it's, Alan, so what if you were looking at it from the standpoint of the child? You're, gonna, you're going to re not allow that child its chance at life. Yeah, I, yeah it's selfish. Yes, um, yes, it's purely about you, and that's not what children are about. Okay, right. but... I'm curious about your girlfriend giving you a heads up on maybe this is your kid. Yeah, that's kind of. Do weird. you think she said that to her new guy? Do you think she said maybe this isn't your kid? I I really don't think it's his because supposedly only been together two months and she says she's three months pregnant. And how is the new guy handling this news? Uh, I have no idea. I haven't talked to him. And and what? Why should we be so sure that this new guy of two months? He's going to raise a child. He's going to hang out and raise a kid and with this chick who's a little bit chaotic. Who, I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't think he'd be a good father here, but... Probably it, attracts guys that aren't yeah. great dads. If, 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 it can, if, if, she, if she had it and it wasn't mine, I would, you know, I'd do whatever I had to do. I guess I'd, I'd, I'd move up there. No. Okay, but, right. but listen, Alan, do you, do you think she'll have an abortion? She's... I don't know. She's kind of giddy about it. I mean, she's happy to be pregnant. Kind of, yeah. Okay, so uh, un uh, Alan, un unfortunately, here's here's the deal, everybody. It it's uh, not using the uh, not using the condom, not using the protection. It's like not putting your seatbelt on when you go down to the corner just right. to buy a pack of smokes. It's uh, right. well, it's just a short shot. Done a hundred percent. It's you still can get cleaned out. That's right. And uh, is it? It's not the odds. It's not like driving across the country without wearing your seatbelt. And right. people make it across the country and back ten times without wearing their seatbelt. Nothing ever happens. And then people just uh, scoot out to the corner, half a block away, and get cleaned out because they weren't wearing their seatbelt. And uh, this is why you just got to put it on every time. And it's the same with the uh, birth control. There you go. And you're going to get in a position like Alan, and there's no real fix. She wants to have the kid, she's going to have the kid. Then you can start getting into paternity testing. Then you can start getting into, you know, relocation. But it's all oh, about boy. the kid now. Yep. Here's the main thing. Don't do it again. That's the main thing. I think, think about the, the main thing is why don't we talk about the morning after pill in this country. That's the main thing. Not, uh, not, not heard it spoken about anywhere really i don't think you know you don't hear it Have spoken. You? well for a while there they were bringing it up negatively like oh that's an abortion pill mm -hmm. now they finally realize that that's dishonest inaccurate rendition of how that pill works mm -hmm. so they're kind of backed off now and hoping it just kind of goes away i've not heard any politician really bring up anything as it, it as it pertains to sort of birth control yeah. and that kind of stuff, I, I hear them constantly harping about more resources for unwanted kids, latchkey kids. We need programs for these kids. We need we need to get to these kids early. We need to provide things for these kids of these broken families because these kids are are not going to get the education and they're going to end up getting involved with drugs and crimes. But I never hear the part about. The kids then, not being created. There's a whole abstinence-only thing going on right now. Are you, are you aware of this? No, but le yes. Yeah, that, that's where they, that's where all the discussion is going. But here, here's that we shouldn't be talking about these things. We should only be talking about abstinence as the only alternative outside of marriage. But here's what I don't understand politically. If there's a problem, and like I said, I know uh, from talking to uh, California 
I don't know, representative or whatever the hell she is. I, I spoke to Maxine Waters about this. She's basically a crazy black woman. I think she has dementia or something. <laughs> she's she's on she's on Esther from Sanford and Son. She didn't really know where she was. I said to her, uh, Miss Waters, you heard about this morning after pill? And she said, Fred Sanford, you old no. weasel, you, you heathen, you. And she made a fist and uh, she took a swing at me with her purse. Uh, she didn't know what it was. She told me that the... Um, she did some me, research. She, me she, had it, she, had, she said it was unproven. Yeah. And I told her, no, that's untrue. And she said, well, the, like, the jury's still out. She, she has people looking into it or something. And I said, no. I said, I said uh, and then I said to her, don't you think you should know about this stuff? Like, I just sort of called her out on it. I don't know it sounds like I'm BSing, but I'm, but I'm not. Because yeah. I don't care. She seemed like a nut job to me. And she just seemed nuts and out of it. And she's just too busy up screaming about, she's up in Sacramento screaming about nothing all day. But the point is, is if you got a problem with the unwanted kids and the latchkey kids and the, the kids that are, you know, on welfare and the parents that can't take care of them, uh, if this is a problem, shouldn't you be looking at producing the kids? I, I, I'm just saying, I've yeah, said this many times, if, if, you got, if you have a problem in your house with roaches, the exterminator doesn't show up at the house and start chasing the roaches around with a rolled up newspaper. Right. He goes for the nest. That's right. It's like, here's where they breed. And I'm not saying kids are roaches, but I'm saying you have a problem. Too many of something that you don't want that's not, the resources aren't there to take care of. You don't chase them all around individually. You go for the nest. And in this case, the nest is young, poor, screwed up people cranking out too many kids. Yep. And you put the resources toward them. And this is not abusive toward the people. This, is, this gives them a shot at life. This gives them a shot to get through college. This gives them a shot to have careers instead of six kids. Yep. Hey, politicians will not touch it. And they'll not touch the morning after pill because they're cowards and pussies, plain and simple. Or, like I said, and I think in Maxine Waters' situation, I think she just has dementia. So, I, I feel. I feel. What a I bunch of pussies! Jay. Hello. You're 14. Yeah. Do, do you agree? Do you agree with what I just said? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What's up? Okay. They're what? They're loose. He said he was gay. Okay, got it. All right, let's keep going. Go ahead, Jay. So, so, so you're gay? What? No. No? Okay, no. keep going. Keep no. going. No. Um, I was going to get my eyebrow pierced to my parents. I'm like, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Mm -hmm. Okay, he said he was yeah, being no. raped at school by the football hey, team. What? Okay, keep going, keep going. What did you say? We can hear you. Keep going. Okay. He lost sensation in his rectum. Oh my God! They freaked. Uh, right. Uh, they freaked on him. And they they freaked on him. So I don't know if you should see a doctor at this point. Keep going, Jay. Okay. So they freaked out when I said that. And said I want to get my eyebrow pierced. Mm -hmm. And um, okay. They, uh, I heard they all finished in him and flooded his innards with semen okay. and he has what's called a, a floating liver syndrome now. <laughs> that's what I that's that's what I can gather so far. <laughs> yes? Um so then I um told him that I just thought it was making him a bowl and stuff. Okay. Did you get it done? He what happened oh. is is his his way of dealing with this pain was um uh, uncontrollable sobbing and masturbating. Okay, got it. In front of the school. In front of the school. While he was sucking his thumb. I, I miss. Uh, you picked up all that. Yes, it's uh, Jay, true. Did you? Did yes. You, wait, wait, Jay. Why did you come up with that idea for a comedy movie? I just heard that. Jay. <laughs> <laughs> Jay, did, did you get the piercing in the eyebrow? No, I. I told you that I um, told my parents that I wanted to get. One. Okay, it, it's not going to happen. Well, wait a minute, that's yeah. not what I heard. It's not going <laughs> to. It's not going <laughs> to... I, 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 okay. yeah. I heard that a 13-year-old um, a, a, uh, girl with Down syndrome kicked his ass in, in, in uh, front of the school, in front of school during, during lunch thumb. while he was masturbating <laughs> and sucking his thumb. Wow. Yeah. And now, he, he <laughs> claims she had the advantage because his, uh, he had pink eye from the semen exposure oh, yeah. and couldn't, couldn't see and her well. And a floating liver syndrome. And a floating liver syndrome. Jay? Oh, uh, yeah. 
Okay, keep going. Jay, you, 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 you got to get your parents' permission to have that kind of piercing anyway. It's a, they're not going to give it. You're not going to get it. It's, it, it rejects a lot up there, the eyebrow. The, you know. Not like we have a doll, so let's say you did get one um, to get infected or whatever. Um, not that likely, actually. But nope. you're 14. you got lots of time. Lots of time. <laughs> Okay. No, no, no. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I've got it. No, yeah. that's going to be bad. It's really good. All right, okay. well, hold on. Hold on. We'll get uh, back with uh, Silent J. <laughs> yeah, it's a good one, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> when we come back. Hey, Love Line, y'all. Phone number. Oh, forget about that. Let's get back to phones. Let's speak to uh, young. Silent J. J. Hey, I'm, thanks for taking my other question. Okay, that's all right. What is it, Jay's Jay? Um, well, I'm, I'm pretty big. I'm the tallest one on my block from my age. I'm 5'7", 145, and I lift weight. So a lot of times... You're what for your age? Oh, look, I'm big and tall for my age. You're big and tall for your age, yeah. Okay, okay, all right. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, I'm 5'7", 145. Yeah, yeah, got it. Okay. He just got into a scrap when to talk about it, though. Jay's an interesting I, I guy. like a young 14 year old guy who speaks in terms of yards. He must play uh, yards? corner football. I said the park was 40 yards from his house. Uh, uh, uh. Jay? Yeah. You play any football? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I know football players. Football players are yards. Yeah. Foot football players are like, uh, like, you know, you go like. Like, you just start thinking in terms, everything becomes yards. Oh, yeah. You just get used to yard increments. Yeah. And then they're like, eh, mailbox probably uh, 14 yards from the front door. And, uh, yeah, the park, 40 yards from the house. Uh, New York, 700,000 yards or you'll say, you'll say, from uh, uh, L.A. From the corner, it's about four football fields. Yeah, start yeah. thinking of football fields yeah. and yards. Seven increments, too, are really good. Huh? Like football, like uh, seven, like 14, two touchdowns, 49, seven touchdowns. Uh, oh, yeah. Thinking sevens. Mm, yeah, like uh, that. Yeah. I did all grow. Yeah. 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 How many yards are you for me? Right now. Right now, we're about. Nine. S- no. We're, we're like six and a half. I was going to say ten. No. No. Not nine. 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 Measure we're, it. We're, measure we're, it. Maybe Measure five. it. Measure it. I uh, think you get a. I, I, there's, there's no tape in here. We're about five and a half or nine. six. Nine. Not nine yards. Yeah, yeah. No, Brian's right. Brian says ten. Yeah. Ten yards. Nine. Ten yards is thirty feet. It's not quite. What position you play? I played linebacker, and I played guard on offense. See, I was offense, so I know yards. Uh, listen, you guys are going to try to argue with me about about distance. We're measuring this through the break. About distance. Get, get a, a measure. Get a tape get measure. It, get it. Anderson, don't move. And we got factor in the thickness of the glass I as will. well. Yeah, okay. Okay, so. <laughs> it's a ridiculous show. Drew, you say we're about nine yards away. You're nine Th- yards This is me yeah. from Anderson. Yeah, you to Anderson, nine yards. And Anderson says more like ten yards, and I would say in the six yard. Mm. I would say six yards. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Good times. Let's, uh, just guys, you know, Michelle. Be, be prepared. Michelle? Michelle oh, hi. What's up? Um, okay. Um, I've been, like, anorexic and bulimic since I was, like, 13. Uh Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And then, um, when my parents found out last year, I was in counseling and recovery, and I did pretty well. And I was pretty much, I was over the symptoms, um, about summer. Mm -hmm. And then after that, a bunch of, like, really, like, big events that you would think might trigger something happened. Like, I mean, I, like, lost my virginity. I started college. Right. Um, all sorts of stuff, but no symptoms. I was fine. You know, I kept myself up. And then I moved out, 
And uh, it turned out to be a really bad, stressful situation. I just moved back home with my family last week. Mm -hmm. And the day I moved in with my parents, um, I just, like, I ate. I didn't eat too much, but I just, like, had this sudden urge, like, I had to go throw it up, and I did. And I've been completely, like, just... Well, are you still in treatment? Um, no. When did your treatment stop? Um, about... Um, a few months ago. All right, time, time to get back in again. It may be just the duration away from treatment that things have finally activated. It may be the stress of whatever sent you back home. It may be being back home has triggered some of these that, old symptoms. That's what my question was, because it, I was really fine. I was doing really well until, like, the day I moved back home. Well, and, but you know, again, like, we don't know. I, I can't predict which it is. It's it's suspicious that being back home had something to do with it, but it doesn't necessarily mean that's the case. Right, but back and being back home, Yeah, and being back home is like an addict coming back into a recovery environment where the people that are, were there when he, was, he or she was using are still the same as they were, and it kind of pushes you back into that same right, emotion. we got to go to... We gotta go to break. Jessica, you've been at home for 50 minutes. I feel sorry for her. You want to know at what point of the mes menstrual cycle can yeah. the uh, pregnancy occur? It's, it's Anytime. Yeah, but it's it's most likely In you know middle. when you ovulate 18 days. between your cycles. Um, you with me? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's satisfactory. We'll be back. Once again, I'm reminded never to question your sense of distances. Yes. Yeah. I know distances, heights, and uh, widths. Huh? And depths. So, yeah. All right. So it's about five and a half or six yards is, uh, is uh, Big A originally predicted. We're going to take a little uh, break. Whatever. Mm-hmm. We'll be back in a uh, short 22 hours. Until next time, this is Adam Crawler for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. Do you have a very Okay. I heard they all finished in him and flooded his innards with semen, okay. and he has what's called a, a floating liver syndrome. Now. <laughs> this has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Wilkins Dingle. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.